Hedge fund managers bet money that a specific stock will decline in value. That's called short selling. Short selling has no obvious value to the American economy. Or at least, that's what we had thought. In 2012, the Reddit subforum called Wall Street Bets was created by Jamie Rogozinski. At the time, he was working as an information technology consultant for a bank in Washington, D.C. Rogozinski originally created Wall Street Bets as a forum where people can be honest and open about their trades and discuss investments, whether they had made money or lost money. Jamie wanted to create an area where people can be real about their stocks. It was this honest and open discussion that attracted so many people to the forum, many of which were young, new retail investors. And that is what helped it grow into one of the site's top 50 subreddits. With the pandemic forcing people to stay inside and stimulus checks being sent out to millions of Americans, people were looking for new ways to spend their money, and online was the easiest way to do it. In 2019, Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade eliminated all their commissions fees, allowing users, both traditional and retail, to trade 100% commissions free. Finally, joining Robinhood. Robinhood had been allowing users to trade 100% commission free since 2013. This attracted many new investors, both traditional and retail. This combination of allowing investors to trade 100% commission free, along with millions of Americans receiving thousands of dollars during a pandemic where they are not allowed to leave their house, was creating the perfect storm for a once in a lifetime stock market event. GameStop! 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 Well, I'm thinking that this GameStop situation is the craziest I think I've ever seen. So why was GameStop chosen amongst all the stocks out there? I spoke with the professor at Texas State University to see what he had to think about this. So if you think about GameStop, I, it's not that difficult, I think. I mean, what they do is they sell these games uh, secondhand, right? Like kind of like a half price books, but for video games. Um, first of all, the pandemic has been very tough for them. Nobody's really going into strip malls anymore to buy these games. And then a lot of these newer consoles like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, whatever it's called, um, you actually download the games straight into the console. So there is no middleman where you actually have to buy games from them. So if you think about the business line of, of GameStop, not a lot of people are buying CDs anymore or DVDs anymore. And to actually go into a store during the pandemic was tough. So it made perfect sense that they were targeted. Many of these young Reddit retail investors felt personally attacked when these giant head funds decide to short GameStop. They took it personal because many of them had played video games in their younger years, always going to GameStop to buy them. What's happening on Wall Street is so clearly awful and so obviously destructive. The question is, who's gonna fight back against it? As it turns out, a bunch of guys on Reddit will. It fell to them to push back against the short sellers because no one else even tried, so they did. A group of independent investors in a Reddit group called Wall Street Bets learned that hedge funds plan to short the stock of a fading retail company called GameStop. So the Reddit investors began buying shares of GameStop, and GameStop surged in value, ultimately up by more than a thousand percent. By the time I caught wind of it, the stock had already risen, you know, several um, hundred dollars from from its start. And uh, looking at the history of the stock, saw that. Uh, stock had going up and up and it seemed to be no end to it. The, the GameStop deal was so strange because in a matter of two days the stock was going up 500 percent. So uh, I think it has been the most extreme case that we have seen here in the U.S. A short squeeze is where a lot of these short sellers uh, if the price starts to move against them so if the price instead of going down it starts to go up so they're suffering losses now. So the price keeps going up. So they sold when it was 100 and now it's 110, 120, 130. So they're suffering losses. So they actually have to go and buy the shares back. This buying the shares back puts more pressure and keeps prices going higher. So if you are waiting and you are not the first one to sell or to buy again and close your short sell, you may be forced to actually buy the shares when it's even higher. So it's like all the short sellers are trying to get out of the of the door and the door is only so wide and they all get stuck. You know, the classic cartoon. It's kind of like that. Uh, the hedge funds, for all their calculation, 
hadn't seen that coming, and they lost billions as a result of it. One hedge fund lost so much money it needed a bailout from two other hedge funds. Meanwhile, some of the investors on Reddit got rich. But getting rich was not the whole reason they did it. They also wanted to send a message to the hedge fund managers. Here's one of the Reddit guys, a man called Justin Speak, explaining. I'd be lying to say if it, there wasn't some pleasure out of the fact, you know, I, I'm a pastor and Jesus tells a story about this rich fool who has an overabundant harvest that's more than he can store. And rather than give the excess to those in needs, he chooses to, to build bigger and bigger barns to store it for himself. And rather than share the billions with the less fortunate, they've built bigger and bigger barns for themselves. And so, yeah, I was 100 percent. There was a part of me that thought, well, it will be fun to be a part of this moment, to see this moment where at some level overnight, these investors are losing their investing lives. It's being demanded from them. While lots of new retail investors were making thousands of dollars, not everyone was happy about their successes. But the hedge fund people don't. They weren't happy. People who lose money rarely are happy. But here's what makes the hedge fund managers different from you. They have a lot more power than you. They control the game, so they immediately change the rules of the game. Today, the investment app Robinhood, which is used by independent investors to buy and sell stock, banned its users from trading GameStop shares, as well as from several other company shares. No one even knew that was legal. Maybe it isn't, but Robinhood did it anyway, and they did it under pressure from the hedge funds, who they really work for. So I felt like it was totally wrong. Um, hedge funds can manipulate the markets to a certain extent. They're investing you know, millions of dollars. And we get a pool of retail investors to kind of do the same thing, uh, to, as mentioned, to force that squeeze and those, those short buys. Um, it just didn't seem right that they were able to put a halt or a pause on the retail investor from keeping that momentum going. So I didn't think it was right at all. I don't think it's right at all. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, market manipulation. I think that was one of those terms that was getting thrown around quite often all over the news. Um, market manipulation, yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, some people interpret it like that. I don't think it was. Again, I think it had more to do with the way that markets operate. If we could have like this instant clearing so that when you click buy, you immediately get the securities and the money immediately leaves your account. And not just your account, but your account with Robinhood. And it goes automatically to the other broker or to the other client automatically. We wouldn't have any of these problems. But uh, the thing is that for a couple of days, Robinhood has money that belongs to the client that still hasn't uh, gone to the other side of the party. So you need to guarantee it in some way. So it was not really market manipulation. It felt like that for sure. And I'm sure that many of the investors that were playing the right probably felt that this was unfair. Uh, but it's, it's just the way that the, that the market is supposed to work. It's just part of the plumbing. I think they did a very poor job explaining it. I mean, it's hard enough to explain, but they should have done it a little bit better. While there's still plenty of mixed emotions over what Robin Hood did, one thing is for sure. If you're going to get on that, on that ride, it's going to be a very, very wild ride. So you got to be aware that, hey, you can lose all of it. You can make a lot of money. Some guys made a lot of money and then lost a lot of money.